Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, just want to throw together a real quick tutorial here. Um, might be something of use to, to folks out there, and if you don't know exactly how to make it work, then it can be a little confusing. Um, there are custom functions to do this, but Flutterflow does have it integrated to make it work, so that's actually what we're going to use is just uh, using Flutterflow's method, and this is one of those situations where um, different backend query types are going to come into play, whether we're using standard query or we're using a uh, uh, dynamic children query. Um, so what we're going to be doing uh, real quick here is if you, I'm going to go over here to my collections real quick. Let's say you're making a marketplace and you have a user carts collection where each user has their own individual cart that is updated uh, depending on if they add items to it and then when they make a purchase those items may be removed or whatever uh, but they have a single document for their cart um, that persists with the um, user's account granted this could be a sub collection but for this tutorial i just made it as a top level collection now if, it's, if it is going to be a top level collection then you would want to have a user reference point here to attach that to whatever user it needs to be assigned to uh, but for again for this tutorial, that's unnecessary. We're just worried about these three items right here Okay, so um, Right now I just have these set up as a string double and integer um, this item in cart Field could be a document reference point set up as a string and it could be a reference to um, like a marketplaces inventory and then you, whenever a, a customer adds the item to their cart, it would just add that reference into that list. Uh, and then from that reference point, you can get the item's name, information, the price, everything like that. Um, but for this, this tutorial, we're actually just going to have it as a string. So the assumption is that when a user adds an item to their cart, um, when you set up the action flow to update the user's, uh, user's cart document, then it would add the item's name to this list field. It would add the item's price to this list field. And then the user could have the option to select the number of items that they want to purchase, and it would add it to this list field. So what we're doing in this tutorial then is we want to create a list. And let's say that the, the user has finished shopping and they're now looking at their cart getting ready to check out. There's gonna be a list generated there that's gonna show them what item items they've added. Uh, the prices for each of those items, and then the quantity of the items that they're purchasing. Um, unless you use, uh, like I said, those, those two different queries in conjunction with each other, if you were to simply just query uh, the, user's doc the user's cart document, uh, it would give you the ability to... Um, to uh, do a reference point if this if items in cart was a document reference rather than a string list you could reference that and get the information from the items document from a different collection and get its name and its uh its price but you would not be able to associate the quantity of items that were added um, because this is a a list field and you can't just simply pull that information in um, you have to do um, another additional query in addition to that, you also want to associate the query of, uh, or I'm sorry, the quantity of items uh, to the, the item that's in the cart. So you need to make sure that they are associated to each other and you're not just generating them randomly. So let me jump over here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to work with this here. Um, and I've already got in my uh, collection manager, I've already got a single document in here and so we're just going to use this one document and again if it uh, if we actually had it set up and going we would either have this in a sub collection under users which would be the most ideal way or if you don't want to do that you would, would have to have a field that is a user reference that way you can associate the document with the user um, but uh, like I said we're not going to do that here However, I do already have these fields set up. So items in cart, I have item one, item two, and item three. Uh, the prices, I have uh, $5, $12, $25, 54 cents. So 
item one is five dollars, item two is twelve, and then item three is that last number. And then I have quantity, so two, one, and fifteen. So think about each of these items in these lists as an index number, where uh, index, the first index number in the list is zero, and then it counts up from there. So this would be zero, one, two. Same with these, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So these are all, as they're listed in the collection, they're already associated to each other. We just need to be able to pull that data into a list view and show it to the end user. Let me jump back over here then. So first thing I would do, and again, it's just very simple. You can customize it how you want. I'm gonna just go ahead and drop a list view in here. And then we would use that list view to go ahead and query from a collection and we'd query the uh, user cards. Um, if you're doing it as a document reference to a, a specific user, uh, then you would just query a single document and then your filter, um, like I said, it's not in here, but your user reference would be equal to the authenticated user's uh, ID. Um, but if you're doing a sub collection, then obviously it'd be a little different here. Uh, turn that off. So anyway, um, so I'm just I'm querying user cards collection and then I'm just going to choose a single document since all I have in that collection is, is one document. Okay, so the rest of this just leave alone. So I'll go ahead and confirm that. So now I'm pulling in that data. All right, so if I were to go, um, just going to throw a row in there real quick. If I were to go and put a text field in here. And let me... Uh, Grab my list view and bring this down some. Actually, let's just do it in the column and put it in the middle. Okay, so my list view is querying that collection. It's getting that document. Um, but if I were to go here and I want to show data from each of those list fields and go up here and I would do my variable like it normally would, there's my user's card document. All right, and here are the available options, items and card. There's my list, items, card prices, and quantity of items. Okay, all that's fine and dandy, but if I click on items and cart, my available options are list contains item, number of items, filter list items, item and an index. I choose any of these, and it's not gonna give me anywhere to actually get the name of the item that's in that list. Um, number of items is obviously a number. Filter list items, same deal, can't get the, can't get the name of the items in that list. Item in the index, I can get the first, last, or specified index, but I still can't get each uh, item item name. This isn't gonna work. Um, so best way to do that, so that you can get each list field's items and get them to show up here, and then of course have them associated with each other. And get rid of that. I'm gonna set this, this. And then I'm just gonna grab column. And I'm just gonna, oops, oh, come on now. Sorry. I got ahead of myself, it needs to be in the row. There we go. Grab a column, duplicate it, and duplicate it again, okay? Um, and then I'll put a text field here, and one in that column, and one in that column as well. All right, so um, in my, let's go over here real quick, list fields generating. So let's go to our row. So this is the next section we want to work in here. Or I'm sorry, let's, uh, not the row, uh, let's go to the column. So let's go to the first, first column here. And this is going to be for our user item name. Um, and then we would go over here to the generating ch children from variable uh, query. And just, I would name it, uh, i just do item name. Uh, leave that empty. And then the value, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to user cards document, which is that uh, list view query that I'm making. And then I'm going to grab the items in cart. The very first one, which is the name of each item. Go ahead and map that so you can get that information. And then you can leave that alone and confirm. Okay. And let's go ahead and do that for each. So I go to this column, the children. This is going to be item price. 
drop that down, grab the items and cart prices, map. Oh, I guess the other one. Okay, I guess this one didn't take. Maybe I didn't save it. Yeah, I may not have saved it. Sorry. Let's do that again. Item name. Item in cart. Map it. Confirm. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, and then the last column. We would go in here, and this would be item quantity. Okay, so now we've got our item name, item price, and item quantity that are generating. So let's go ahead and just go to our first text field up here. For the item name, we'll go to our variable. We've got the item name option here. Don't do the drop down because that'll give you an index number. Just do item name, tap on it, uh, and leave, leave that alone and confirm. And then over here, same thing, item price, confirm, and then item quantity confirm and let's uh let this space out some here okay so now we've called our query our backend query to our um, cart document we added a row so that we could have these columns next to each other we added three columns with a text field for each uh column and then we did that uh, child variable um, query where we got the uh, we, we went in and referenced the uh, the list data field for each associated item and so now if we run our test oops i've got errors where do i have errors at oh, that's my custom custom code sorry i gotta clear this out real quick so i'm actually because these things take forever to cycle through i'm going to pause the video go ahead and open up the test view and then once it's pulled up i'll I'll unpause the video. Okay, so that uh, that's all finished up now. So we've got our test view up here now, and here's our, our items down through here. So as you can see, item one, $5, and quantity of two. Item two, $12, quantity of one. And then item three, $25.54, and quantity of 15. And of course, if we pull our uh, manager back over here, you can see that those three things match up here. Uh, Okay, so <clears throat> that's how you do that. So if you're you're needing to reference a specific document, and, and actually you can you can reference multiple documents and do this, but if you're wanting to pull um, data from a list view, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, not a list view, but from a list data type inside a document, um, and it's not it's not a reference to something else, uh, a list reference, uh, it's just like a string. You can do it that way. Um, and then of course you can, uh, grab it from multiple different list data fields within a document. And so long as you do them and create a row and do them in columns, then you can associate the data across, um, because they are all sharing the same index. And that's what that, that, um, search is looking for. That query is looking for the, uh, index comparisons. So hopefully that's helpful to somebody. I can see this being useful in a marketplace type app. Uh, where you want to display item information as well as the quantity that the user um, is uh, purchasing. And then, of course, if you wanted to show like a total price uh, for each item, you could use a custom function that would multiply um, the quantity times the price of the item. And then you could also query that and put that out here. Um, all right, so that that's it. Uh, I've got another tutorial coming here shortly, so I'll be back in just a little bit. Take care.